neglected. We want to close the divide between those who have much and those who have little. And forgotten. Because we are all beneficiaries of the love of God. See how music is bringing a voice to the voiceless on today's 700 Club Interactive. Good morning and welcome to the show. In the Ukraine, there are more than 130 nationalities. Sources estimate the number of Roma to be upward of 400,000. These Roma families tend to have high levels of unemployment, deplorable living conditions, they face discrimination and exclusion. The Roma kids are an uneducated group of gypsy children who live in dire poverty. But through music, these children have now found hope. A young American named Ryan Meadows has given these forgotten children a voice. Take a look. Orphan's Promise went to Ukraine to unite two worlds to make one sound. We wrote songs that reflect the heart of Orphan's Promise and asked the kids that we help daily to come alongside us and create music. We took the vibrant instruments and sounds of Ukraine and fused them with the sound of our worship to make one joyful noise. Together, we found our sound. Here's my heart, Lord. He's my heart, Lord. Here's my heart. He's my heart. I am yours. We want to close the divide between those who have much and those who have little because we are all beneficiaries of the love of God. Well, joining me now is music producer Ryan Meadows. And Ryan, great to have you with us. I want you to talk about the Hope Project. What is this and how did it come to be? So um, one of the things that, that we did with this is when we first talked uh, last year in 2015, um, we came up with an idea to say, how can we figure out to capture these voices of these children, something Orphan's Promise is really passionate about, mm -hmm. and give the, the volunteers and the partners a, a tangible way to actually hear yeah. the sound of these kids. And so we decided we can make an album. So we went over to the Ukraine and we worked with uh, the gypsy children to actually write music and capture sounds using Ukrainian instrumentation to have a, an album that people can listen to in their CD player. That sounds so easy when you just say what you did, but <laughs> it was fraught with many challenges, not the least of which is none of the children that they worked with spoke English. How did you get around that? Well, that's the cool thing about music is that it's very uh, fanatical. And that's uh, when I was a kid in kindergarten, that's how I learned how to read and how I learned a lot of things is uh, just listening to the sounds of things. And so what we would do is we'd, we'd explain the songs and the messages uh, that we were trying to communicate with these lyrics. And we would work phonetically with these kids and just sing to each other back mm -hmm. and forth. And it was funny because it was stressful at first when they <laughs> thought, wow, we have all these words we have to learn. Yeah. But when they could hear the sound of the words and the music, yeah. There's something special that really gets communicated. And I think music is an international yeah. language in that way. Well, I think the other message is you can do it. Totally. You know, I mean, in totally. that culture, Roma children are gypsy children and they are put down culturally. They don't have opportunity for schooling in most instances. I mean, just everything in their life says you can't do it. And then you come along and say, you know, not only do we want to hear you, but a lot of people are going to hear you and you can do this. I mean, it, did you see them change in the process of that? For sure. Yeah. And that was something that was really cool to witness, um, which is the confidence level. Yeah. Um, when we first went in there, the kids were shy and reserved. 
just like kids would be over here, you know, yeah. just like I was mm -hmm. when I was a kid uh, with different things. Because you didn't know that you had the ability inside you to do yeah. this thing. And so as we had progress and like, wow, I actually sound pretty good. Um, and they felt like they were actually learning things. The confidence level yeah. uh, just went through the roof with these kids, which I think it's an important thing for every kid anywhere to be Absolutely. able to experience. Absolutely. It's, it's fun when you watch this video that we just saw to see them go from the intense learning to just yeah. the fun. You know, yeah. like we're just we're just here having a good time now you know we see this boy in the video who sings the solo who has just a voice with a texture to it that's something special mm -hmm. tell me about him oh, that was an amazing day so that, that day ended up being one of our bigger challenges at first where we had some miscommunication with translators and we thought we we're gonna have this big group of kids show up and they just brought in one kid <laughs> um, and this kid sang for us, his name was Virag, and he sang for us, and it was just unbelievable. So yeah. at first I was stressed out by the situation, then I said, let's just spend the next three hours working with him and getting to uh, just capture his voice. So we went through a handful of songs where he just was unbelievable. It was such a good connection to get mm -hmm. to just sing back and forth to each other and really get yeah. to worship together yeah. in that moment. Um, and record it and give it to people. So when I hear Virag, I mean, I stop and go, wow. And what happens to Virag now? Is there an outlet for him to use the gift that God's obviously given to him? What happens? Yeah, well, that's one of the amazing things that's, that's happening right now is uh, some of these students were actually taken um, with one of their teachers to try to be a part of a music school. Mm -hmm. And in Ukraine, as you know, the gypsy community is uh, is an outcasted community, and they weren't accepted in the school. There was no opportunity for them yeah. to get any kind of formal training that way. And so a cool thing that Orphan's Promise is getting to offer for these kids is to actually put together uh, this music school and this mm -hmm. music program for these kids uh, to not only just learn a little bit, but I, I think really thrive and be leaders in their community yeah. uh, and really find their voice and be able to share that with, with their local community, but also the world. Yeah. I want to mention this because I... I I'm going to talk to you about how you can get a hold of this CD in a minute. But you, the songs on this CD were written by you and Laura Moore, who works in Orphan's Promise on our team. And I had no idea Laura knew how to write music. Or, but, I mean, it's something special. I mean, God really anointed the work of both of you putting your hands and your hearts together. Talk a little bit about how that came to be. Yeah, it was an unbelievable process. And so that's, that's what I do all the time is I write music and, and, and I love it. And really a cool thing is we got to work with Laura and the Orphan's Promise team to, to really capture the message of what Orphan's Promise is. And then we got to combine that with the sound of Ukraine and the voice of those yeah. people. So really this whole project is not just one person doing something, but a fusion of so many sounds and so many voices that I believe God is extremely happy to, yeah. to hear himself. Where, you know, you and I have known each other for a long time, mm -hmm. and uh, I don't even remember how many years ago it was, but my first exposure to you was your heart for orphans in Mali. And where did, where did that whole thing come from? How did God birth that in you? Yeah, I, I don't even know where it came from. I think it's something where uh, the cool thing about being a little bit younger is about nine years ago, so I was in college, is that you can see a need, you see a project, you say, okay, yeah. let's do it, you know? Yeah. Luckily, you've never changed in that area, you know, but you still have that <laughs> in you. Um, but that was something where I think I was a, a junior in college, mm -hmm. and we had, there was this lady that we had connected with um, that was building one of the first orphanages over in Mali, Africa. And we got together a group of friends and we contacted yeah. you and I said, Terry, we want to raise money to help make this happen. Can you help be a part of it? So we were able to raise, I think, $60,000. $60,000 at a one evening event. I mean, that was pretty amazing. I want to talk to people in a minute about how they can get this CD. What do you want the takeaway to be from this, Ryan, when people listen, when they enjoy what's been put together here? Something that was really important to me on this CD was I didn't want it to be another, uh, just like a cute picture, like a parent hangs on the refrigerator mm -hmm. where I'm proud of you. I wanted it to be something excellent and, and beautiful. And I think the important thing to think is everybody does have a voice. Yeah. Everybody has a sound and it's not, we're not doing anybody any favors listening to it. I think this is meant to be enjoyed because these yeah. kids have a beautiful voice, a beautiful sound, and these are beautiful songs. And that only comes together 
by maintaining a fusion of taking the culture of Ukraine, taking uh, how our worship is here in America and combining these things and making it something that all people can can enjoy and we celebrate every person within it. I think it's great that we start, because I'm hoping this will go on to other nations, but I think it's great that we start with Ukraine because yeah. the Roma people are a forgotten people. And it makes the message of what's happening here all the more special. There's a benefit concert coming up. It's this week, tell us about it. Yeah, it's this Friday. April 15th. Um, you can register on Eventbrite. There's also links on Facebook with it. But really what it's going to be is a night of songs and stories where we're going to get to hear songs from this album that were created with these uh, Ukrainian gypsy children. Um, and then stories uh, that you'll be getting to share mm -hmm. uh, specifically in Ukraine, but also just what Orphan's Promise is doing around the world. And I think it's very important for anybody in the Hampton Roads area to come out and be a part of this because there's so many amazing things that this local organization Orphan's Promise is doing all around the world. A chance to have a great evening and yeah. make a difference as well. Well, thank you, Ryan, so much for thank your you. role in all of this. But we want to offer you a special promo price of $5 on the Hope Project CD. That's available until this Thursday. Then it's going to go back up to its original purchase price of $8. You can go to shop.cbn.com to order the CD right now, or you can call us at one 866 526-7173, 866-526-7173. And you can join us for the Night of Hope that he was just talking about. It's coming up this Friday, April 15th, right here in Virginia Beach. It's from 7 to 9 p.m. at the CBN Corporate Support Building Chapel. So come here while we're giving hope and a voice to forgotten children. It's a free event, and we'd love to have you join us. Over to you, Andrew. Thank you so much. Well, still ahead, rescuing orphans from the middle of a war zone. It was a lot of blood, and it was very, very scary. Hear how they're getting a safe passage. That's next when we come back. Stay with us. Well, right now, Terry and I want to show you how CBN partners like you are helping the women and children of Ukraine. Take a look. This building in eastern Ukraine is an orphanage. Just months ago, it was filled with children. Now it is eerily quiet with pockmarks, burned out walls, and floors strewn with debris. Everybody shoots. A lot of people have died in the city. It was a lot of blood, and it was very, very scary. The children don't understand why the masked men in green came with guns and grenades. All they know is that they are terrified. My five-year-old child began to scream and pray, Mommy, only God can help us. God, protect us, please. When the insurgents swarmed the city of Slavansk, this orphanage, partially supported by CBN's Orphan's Promise, became a target. The children inside, potential human shields. That's when Orphan's Promise, in partnership with the ministry of Jeremiah's Hope and Alliance Ukraine, went into action. Vehicles were mobilized, food and supplies were loaded, 17 orphans and their caretakers settled into their seats. Extra space was filled with frantic parents of small children from the surrounding neighborhoods. With everyone safely on board, the dangerous rescue mission began. Thankfully, that decision was made just in time because just days after the children were, were taken to a safe place, the Russian separatists took over the children's home and there was fighting going on and windows were shot out. We were scared when we went through the checkpoints. They were firing at cars with people. We passed the first checkpoint, then the second, then third, then freedom. Everyone shouted, hooray! Twelve hours later, the refugees arrived safely at their temporary home. After a great meal and a nap, the refugees received some unexpected visitors. Gizmo and the staff of CBN CIS arrived for an afternoon of fun, games, and what else? Brand new Superbook episodes. The kids enjoyed it very much. They were singing songs, dancing, and being happy. One week later, a similar rescue was organized to transport the orphans of Mariupol out of the war zone. Everything has been good since we left this terrible war. The children and their caregivers from Slavonsk and Mariupol 
Send thanks to CBN and Orphan's Promise. More than thank you. Thank you so much for taking such good care of us and of our children. Well, I would like to say thank you. On behalf of the orphans and those in the orphanages that you helped protect and rescue, thank you for caring so much about people that are strangers to you. You know, we watch the news and we see events unfold and we say, oh Lord, please protect these people or oh, that's a shame or I hope things get better. But in this case, CBN Partners made news. You provided rescue to children who desperately needed it. This is such a great way to make an impact for individuals who can't save themselves. How exciting that CBN Partners can step in and literally provide rescue. And it's so easy to do. Joining the 700 Club, just 65 cents a day, it's $20 a month. And look at the impact we're having around the world. You can give us a call at 888-777-1999, or you can log on to 700clubinteractive.com to join with us. You know, scripture says the true religion is helping the widows and orphans, and that's what we're able to do thanks to people like you. When you join us, I want to send you a great new DVD called Heaven. This was a teaching put together by Pat Robertson, and I, I tell you, after I watched this, I was given so much hope about the home, the place that Jesus Christ has prepared for us, for all of us. It's yours when you join the 700 Club. And Terry, thank you for what you've done through Orphan's mm. Promise. You know, it's a privilege, isn't it, to be able to collectively together make that kind of a difference. I think it's, it's what we do as God's family. So coming up, we're going to pray for your needs. But first, an abandoned baby girl. When I was only one month old, I was left by a train station in a paper box. See how she was given a second chance at life and is now helping others right after this. Kenzie Walker was thrown away, literally, shortly after she was born, left for dead at a Chinese train stop. Well, Kenzie survived thanks to the kindness of a stranger, and she's thrived ever since. Here's her remarkable story. I was born in the Hunan province of China, and when I was only one month old, I was left by a train station in a paper box. I was alone, and nobody was with me, and nobody cared. And someone found me and took me to an orphanage. Chuck and I were married in 82, and then our son Brad was born in 84. And a year and a half later, we lost uh, a second son uh, at birth. So uh, we spent the next 16 years contemplating the idea of adoption. We just had this feeling that our, our family wasn't complete. So in 2000, we adopted our first daughter, uh, Caitlin, and uh, she's now 15. <laughs> And then uh, three years later, we just had it in our hearts that you know God had a plan for another daughter in our lives. And we heard about all the baby girls in China who needed forever homes. God just said, that's where you've got to be. And so we made plans and God matched us up with Mackenzie Grace Walker. We fell in love the moment we saw her picture. We couldn't get there soon enough. When we were working through an agency and we were traveling with a group of 13 other couples from the States who were all going through the same process. And then literally the second day we were in China, we got our baby girls. When we got home from China, I just walked in the door and we had a chime clock in our kitchen. And she heard the chime and she walked up to it and looked at it and mimicked the sound exactly on pitch. Wherever we went, she would hum along with music. It became obvious that it was just a part of who she was. She would sing as she was playing. Even when friends were over, she would plan these elaborate programs and she would give everyone parts and then come perform for us. It was just, it was a part of her everyday world. I honestly don't remember a time I never sang. I started singing everywhere. <laughs> Mackenzie has gotten opportunity to sing really from the time she's been about five years old. With this album and um, having a manager and getting to sing like in really big places, I just kind of flash back. And I remember when I was even five when I started voice lessons, I'm like, Mom, I want to be a famous singer. 
The first time she walked out on that big field and she was, you know, 50 pounds, this tiny little girl and my heart is pounding, thing. <laughs> it's overwhelming and she walked out and just belted it. This will actually be her third year uh, to, to do the anthem at a Houston Astros game. She's singing such an incredible song uh, in front of, you know, this huge audience of, you know, 40, 50,000 people. To hear that little voice just boom out over the loudspeakers as a parent, you just can't help but your heart just swell. It's really unbelievable and I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm actually here. I'm not in a dream. This is for real. That's a little <laughs> overwhelming to uh, a couple of parents. We're just a normal, you know, family. To watch all those children gather around her and want their picture made and just their smiling faces and to watch Mackenzie, you know, interacting with them. Uh, <laughs> that's just so much fun. Uh, you can't get any better than that as a parent, observing that. McKenzie can go out and, and help children and help, uh, you know, spread the love of Jesus throughout the world. It's not only what she wants to do and what we want for her, it's, it, it's our obligation, it's, it's our calling. I work with a ministry called ICM, International Cooperating Ministries, and what I'm getting to do with them is help building an orphanage. I was an orphan and now I have a family, and there are kids out there who are still an orphan and they don't have a family. I need to help them because God helped me, and through God, I can help them. This was just God's plan, that she started off in China for a reason. She was placed with us for a reason. One of my favorite verses is Jeremiah 29, 11. I know the plans I have for you, plans to give you hope in the future. And that verse means so much to me because it's actually happening to me. God is with you and He has a plan for every single one of you. And it's so much bigger when it's God's plan. Out of the mouths of babes. Wow, what a message this young girl brings to us. You know, uh, one of the things that I'm reminded of in Scripture as I watch her story is that God takes all things the good certainly, but also negative things, even evil in our lives and promises that He, if we will give it to Him, will work it for good. I mean, you certainly see that in Kenzie's life. I mean, she's having a powerful impact. And Terry, in watching that story, and I'm just considering this girl was just abandoned. Yeah. Abandoned, left to fend for herself, and with nurturing the talent that yeah. God placed inside her, once it was nurtured and she was cared for, the talent is going to glorify Him, and it's a good reminder for all of us, whether we're adopting or not, but investing in the lives of our children, investing in the lives of other young people that we encounter, yeah. and helping them become what God has designed them to be. Mm -hmm. And you know, it, I think one of the things that's so special about this also is in the United States, we have the opportunity to do that so readily, but <clears throat> God has opened doors in other countries for us to invest there as well. So. You know, lots of things to consider as we look at Kenzie's story and ask, what's my role, God? Amen. And one thing we love to do in this program is pray for people, mm -hmm. and we have the opportunity to do that now. We have received a prayer requests on our Facebook page. Here's one from Sally. She says, my husband is serving overseas in Africa, helping orphans and widows in small villages. He says they don't have much, and it's sad to see their living conditions. Please pray for these people. May God supply their every need. And then John says, my daughter is not a believer. She's going to have my granddaughter soon, and I want her to be raised in a Christian home. Please pray that my daughter and her husband will have an encounter with the Lord. And then Daniel writes, I have a problem communicating with my parents. They don't listen to me or care about my opinion. Please pray that they will start to see me as an adult and no longer their little boy. I want them to value my thoughts and opinions. Well, let's pray. <clears throat> Lord God, I'm struck in hearing Sally's prayer request. Here she is with her husband serving overseas, and her, her prayer request is not for her being back home or, or for her marriage. It, it's about the people that her husband is serving mm -hmm. and the circumstances he encounters and the sadness he feels as he sees the people he's trying to minister to. Lord God, we pray for Sally's husband. We pray for missionaries around the globe, Lord God. You'll give them wisdom and infusion of your Holy Spirit. And Lord God, we pray that lives are dramatically changed by the dear, loving hearts of these missionaries. In Jesus' name. 
And Father, we lift up John, who's so concerned about his daughter and her, his granddaughter-to-be. And Lord, we just ask that you would infuse your presence into their lives, that you would cause circumstances to come together in a way that would cause that daughter and her husband to realize that they need you, that you are there for them and that they have a need for you and that their daughter has a need for you. So Jesus, just make yourself real in that family and also want to mention Daniel. God, we all want to be heard. We all want to be valued. Will you cause things to come together for good for him that his parents might recognize that his opinion, his thoughts, his ideas matter. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We leave you with these words from Jeremiah chapter 22. This is what the Lord says, be fair-minded and just. Do what is right. Help those who have been robbed. Rescue them from their oppressors. Quit your evil deeds. Do not mistreat foreigners, orphans, and widows. A young pastor and his wife receive a devastating diagnosis for their baby girl. The reaction? Unwavering, unreasonable hope. Find out why their story is inspiring people around the world to get a G tattoo on the next 700 Club Interactive.